Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of my new YouTube series, and first YouTube series. This is Military Space Program, and we're going to be creating a military space program from the ground up, and then continuing on and advancing and expanding until we're a highly advanced military force spread throughout the system. So I think this will be a lot of fun. So. The first thing we're going to need, obviously, when we start our space program is communication and observation. So we're just going to make a uh, quick little satellite as the first object we're putting in space. And uh, we'll send this up. I'm going to fast forward the majority of building this because nobody needs to uh, see all that gibberish. But uh, if you want, you can watch it bit by bit. Everything I make um, in this, including the satellites, small satellites, big satellites, will have docking ports so it can be serviced, refueled, and all that kind of stuff, whether it be by Kerbinauts themselves or just bots we send up. After we send up this first satellite, I'll be sending up our first station hub, which will also be a cruiser that we can later take on to other planets and stuff if I build it right. Um, and we don't have any issues with that. And uh, after we send up the hub, we'll mess around a bit, find something else to send up and attach to it. It'll probably be some sort of escape vehicle or uh, drone for moving around parts up there. Well, so far we have our fuel, our engines, and uh, We've got some RTGs and some batteries. I like uh, I like RTGs. I, I never really see much point in using um, solar panels, aside from looks, to be honest. Unless you're going to be putting an ion engine on something, the game doesn't drain. No parts in the game actually drain enough electricity for you to need anything other than RTGs. And you know what? Actually, let's put an ion engine on here just as a backup. Yeah, I think it'll be good. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put an ion engine on. And uh, we'll put a couple small solar panels. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the next bits, and I'll be back when we've got this mostly built. is finished. All we've got to do is launch this, and I think I'll be putting this up at around a 300 kilometer orbit. And uh, there should be enough fuel to uh, give us some flexibility with that. We might be able to go further, might be able to go less if we don't like what we have. But I like 300 kilometers because it allows us to take use of 
most of the time acceleration levels in the, the game. Something I didn't really think about was I probably should put a couple parachutes on those boosters because we'll be dropping those right above the heads of that launch pad and probably wouldn't feel too good for everybody down below having uh, raining boosters coming down at, you know, 100 meters plus a second. But, oh well, we'll, we'll maybe uh, modify that in our future, future builds. Most of the time uh, you'd have these boosters falling off out over the ocean, but there they go boosters away. As you can see, we're dropping those right above here because I don't like to make my uh, turn until I'm at least above uh, 10,000 meters. Um, and we're, we're still going to push a little bit further than that even um, before we make our full 45 degree turn. We're just going to tilt it slightly right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and time accelerate for the next bit of the launch. Okay, uh, there we are. We've got our orbit, putting out our solar panels, and everything looks good. We have <laughs> a very large excess of fuel that's going to allow us to maneuver around if we don't actually want this at this altitude. Um, so we'll just leave that fuel there for now, um, get everything deployed on here. A lot of people uh, ask me why I don't use maneuver nodes and things like that. Well, I do use maneuver nodes, but not for simple things like getting a stable orbit. Um, I just find it simpler to do it by hand, I guess. Once you've been doing it for such a long time, you just get used to it. And it seems simpler to, to just do it that way without the nodes. However, when I intercept planets or other spacecraft, I definitely use the maneuver nodes because they just make life so much easier in that aspect. There we go, just pointing this towards Earth so it can do its uh, communication duties. And uh, look at that. Beautiful view. All right, head back down to the Space Center. And time to build our space station hub slash cruiser hub because that's what this will be used for. We'll be using this, and we'll just exit out of here. We'll be using this um, initially as a space station, but I want to build it um, with some pretty pretty capable massive engines and fuel supplies so we can uh, take this thing interplanetary and possibly put it around Duna or Eve. I'm not sure what will be our, our military target of choice. Maybe Duna just because I really like Duna, but we'll see. Maybe uh, you guys can help choose where we go first. Quickly speed up some of this building process here. Just so you don't have to see me fumbling with all the different parts and uh, trying to find what I need. I'm going to build a spire and uh, we'll put our our connectors up there for our, our different docking ports. Um, just going to go with the, the simple one. I've actually never used that piece before on any of my space stations. I usually just build the four-way using the girder pieces. Um, part of that is because I just don't like how it doesn't really work with symmetry. But I'm thinking this might save a little bit of uh, performance because it's just one part. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, uh, it might be a higher poly part or something like that. But the girders really do seem to, to cause a bit of a performance hit. Putting my RCS on uh, these decouplers here, which will allow me to kind of balance out my RCS once this ship is built, uh, built bigger. Um, so I can shoot off some of those thrusters if they are causing problems um, with 
stability and everything if I have SAS and RCS turned on at the same time. Gonna build our lower stage here to get this into orbit. This is just gonna be, you know, your standard um, five engine underneath your orange piece. And we'll put that on the sides. Slightly asparagus staging. Um, so the fuel feeds in, get better efficiency that way. And we'll just use uh, probably two boosters here. And that should be good enough. Alright, looks good. Fix our staging. You see me uh, attaching this and lowering it down. I just like to lower it down. It doesn't really help anything, but it just looks better on the launch pad. So it's just an aesthetics thing for myself. Alright, well nothing's blowing up on the launch pad, so let's do this. We have a lot of uh, thrust here at the very beginning, so certainly should be no problems. The actual hub is quite light, it's just got the RCS and uh, a couple of structural pieces on it really, and uh, that one small 2.5 uh, meter tank. Just keep our engines from overheating, throttle down just a little bit. Fast forward this a little bit here so it uh, doesn't take so long. There goes our boosters, no problem there. This uh, 5 configuration works very well. <laughs> you saw I had already started the turn and uh, launched away those, those side pieces <laughs> and it nearly clipped off one of my lower rockets so I was glad that didn't happen. Close call. go pick up some speed and I think this should be good at about 130 um, because that'll let us uh, accelerate times 100 I believe because it'll be above 120 meters 120 uh, thousand meters so 130 130 thousand should be perfect for this and it'll allow us to get there relatively cheaply there goes that final stage and uh, now we have our circularization stage just to um, get us a nice even orbit at about 130,000 meters. Almost there, just a little bit more. We're going to have plenty of fuel left over in this stage, so we're just going to leave it attached and not destage it yet. And uh, we can use it for any future maneuvers that we need to do, as fuel is expensive and very valuable once we have it in orbit. little burn here just because I'm getting excessive compulsive for this. Alright, there we go. Now I'm just looking at this and, and kind of deciding what I want to put up next. Um, and I'm thinking some drones would be good that I can use to move space station parts around with. But I also wanted, um, I had already built um, a, a kind of emergency evacuation vehicle. So I'm kind of uh, wanting to put that up here too. I'm going to go ahead and build this uh, next launch stage and everything um, off camera, so I'll be back with the launch. Alright, here we go. As you can see, I've got my emergency vehicle up top there. I'm pulling in its gear, and on the bottom of that is the drone, so I'm being a little bit uh, greedy here, and I'm trying to get two things up at the same time. <laughs> and as you can see, we have problems right off the bat. Things go horrible. It uh, looks like we have guidance <laughs> guidance system errors, and this thing's just somersaulting through the air. Uh, our trusty pilot there goes ahead and pulls the uh, the emergency lever and decouples himself from the top of that rocket, and uh, he's going to try and see if he can get a landing and, and save himself along with the emergency vehicle. This thing flies quite well, so he's got no problem pulling himself out of his dive. I guess that's what I get for trying to do too many things at once. Um, I'll probably have to break that down into uh, two, two different launch phases. One for the drones. I might be able to send up two drones at once along with their attachment pieces and then I'll have to send up these shuttles individually. The shuttles are a bit tricky just because they have so much wing on them that it really likes to direct the launch in uh, the wrong direction, that direction normally towards the ground, and that's no good. So, Trusty 
Captain Kerman here is pulling us in for a smooth landing. Alright, and touchdown. So it looks like, whoops, there we go, <laughs> into the cockpit view. I don't think I did that on purpose. I think I miss hit a button. Uh, there we go. <laughs> and off the runway, but still alive. Uh, it looks like my next video will be uh, launching up these shuttles and uh, some drones and hopefully some other parts. And we might get into some, some weapons as well. Thanks for coming. That's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed.